Welcome everybody. We have Snow Shovel here. All right. And uh, special guest again, Pyro. It's up. Uh, it's not special if I do it two times in a row. Go okay. Ahead. That's it's true. still special to me. No one cares. <laughs> okay. Okay. But um, this episode we're Bag gonna it. go over some uh, <laughs> some important things. One of the most requested things in the, our whole career of Ava. It's gonna Avra. be Avra. Avra. My Avra. my mistake. Exactly. Um, the content is gonna be about peripherals, as in mouse, keyboard, monitor, mouse pad, headset, blah blah blah. So, the one of the most important things in gaming in general, not just uh, with Avra, but like everything, Battlefield, Counter Strike, everything. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go. Uh, through each person and what they use, maybe one product each person, and uh, we're gonna give a short explanation on you know why, how to use it, blah blah blah. Okay, so Snow, pick one, give us a testimony. Okay, uh, I'll go over the most important thing in my opinion, which is the mouse, and I've personally used the Steel Series I for the past two years, and I think. It is the best mouse you can buy for the money. Um, I can attest to that, by the way. I've used I've used the Death Adder. I've used the G500. I've used the G5. I've used G7 Death Adder, or I said Death Adder already. Uh, basically, Razer products in general. I've used them. I, I used to be a big uh, Razer fanboy until I picked up a Steel Series I. I think the Steel Series I is the best mouse for the money, not because. It has the best sensor or anything, but because it's just a mouse that you can forget about because you don't think about it when you're using it, which is really important to me. And uh, it's just reliable and it's accurate and it gets the job done every single time. And it's not a mouse that forces you to uh, use a specific grip. You just use it the way you want to use it, which I think is really important. So. Steel Series I, um, not the Sensei. Do not get a Sensei. The sensor is yeah, awful. they're they're completely oh two different things. It's not the same mouse. I think the Zai was the best mouse ever made, and that Steel Series went downhill ever since they upgraded, or in my opinion, downgraded to the Zai. So I recommend the Zai. Um, I'm so, sure uh, I'm sure a lot of people will say that they prefer their Death Adder or their G500 or whatever mouse they use. But personally, if you are in the market for a new mouse, I think finding a Zai, if they're, if you can find a new one, is probably one of the best choices you can make. Um, they're pretty cheap now. I think they're like 70 bucks. So try and find one online if you can't find one. Yeah, uh, they're discontinued. Try and get a refurbished one. I don't know what to say because they don't make them anymore. But I think that was the best mouse ever made. Um, also, the drivers are nice too. Uh, they have all kinds of stuff you can fix. Yeah, they have uh, they have correction. If you like correction, they you can disable it entirely. They have uh, just jitter correction in general. They have really high CPI settings. They go to five thousand. Although I don't think you need any more than two thousand. And I think I've talked about the mouse too much. So uh, let's go over to Pyro with his recommended product. Um, my recommended product would be the G35 headset. Um, I got them refurbished, 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 refurbished yep. used and repaired, and uh, it's lasted me longer than my previous two Steel Series headsets that I bought new. So they're durable. They're also sound isolating, and so if you live like in a populated area, um. And you're focusing on sound play. They're really helpful for that because it, it, it filters out, you know, like, you know, all the ambient noise. You don't really notice it until you put them on. You're like, wow, it's a lot quieter now. Uh, also, the mic on it is is really nice, um, especially for like communicating with your team. It's very clear. And uh, they're again, they're they're hardy and they've lasted me a long time. Yeah, they're good. Um... I had Steel Series headsets before. They didn't really last me that long. <laughs> I had the seven or no, I had the seven H, and I've had the so five H, I, yeah, and I, I had Siberia's. Yep. Mm -hmm. They all broke on me. Yeah, but I they mean, make great mice products. I'm not bashing on Steel Series, but I think they make good mice. The problem with Steel Series is that they're not 
durable. Like, their products just don't last a long time, and that's, I think that's their greatest downfall right now. But, yeah. but their Zai. The Zai is amazing. Yes. Headsets are great, it's just they break. That's the problem. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on to Long. I'm just going to recommend another product for you guys. Alright, um, so a lot of you guys will probably uh, try to disprove me on this, but seriously, I've been in your position, but I'm telling you right now, a, a mechanical keyboard. The investment <coughs> is kind of steep, but seriously, I have a SteelSeries 6G, right? As do, as do I. Yeah. He, Pyro and, and Long both have 6G V2s yeah, by SteelSeries, and I have a 7G, yeah. which is, they're all mechanical keyboards made by SteelSeries. Anyway, okay, so in general, in general, invest, if you want to fucking play this game better, get a mechanical keyboard. A mechanical keyboard, okay, so the difference is a regular keyboard, like your your Dell keyboards or whatever Microsoft keyboards you have, probably have already, like given by your mom or whatever. <laughs> they, okay, so the way they work is they have like this plate and you press the button and it takes a while for the computer to recognize it, okay? Not that long, but still, a mechanical keyboard, when you press it down, what the computer is supposed to do is supposed to register like in almost less than half the time and the point of that is that whenever okay whenever you want to press a freaking button on the keyboard you want it to react immediately you want everything all of your gear to react as quick as possible and that's the point a mechanical keyboard you'll know the difference once you get one even though what the price okay the one that i got it's like sixty dollars right yeah it was like yeah, 70, it was like, 60 70 dollars yeah but once I started playing with it, I was like, this is the best investment I've ever had. And I think Pyro can attest to that too. Right? Yeah, I, I've had I've had a handful of keyboards the past few years. And this one, not only for AVA, for any game you can play. I mean, you want your keys to react regardless of what game you're playing. This is good for everything. And the keys are reactive. And it's the best keyboard I've ever owned. Yeah, and also, one way to test it out, do your little sniper thing, quick switch, double Q, whatever the hell you want to do. One, two. Break shooting. Yeah. Break shoot. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Break, break shooting. shooting you will notice a huge difference if you break shoot with a mechanical keyboard. So, so yeah, my setup is like a uh, mechanical keyboard, still series. I got a Zai. I got a big ass mouse pad. It's good shit. You'll, you'll like it if you just follow that. Um, okay, so another. Frequently asked question dealing with like uh, hardware. hardware is how to get your FPS up, 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 up more. The more the better. Everyone knows that, right? So, okay, you guys have probably seen some of Snow's videos regarding his hardware, but okay, simple as this if you really want good quality gameplay with high FPS 200 plus, you gotta dish out the money. We're talking, um, yeah. we're talking like graphics card, CPU. I mean, hard drive. Yeah, hard drive is kind of important. But RAM, RAM, graphics card, CPU. We're talking hundreds of dollars. Of what? Um, let's say, talk about two hundred dollars. Thousands of dollars. No, not thousands. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. Not that much. Millions of dollars. <laughs> Maybe if tens you're of an millions asshole. in dollars. <laughs> anyway, what well, Long's saying is that if you want high FPS, 200 plus, especially in a game like ABA, you have to you have to invest some money into a gaming computer. Um, if you can't afford the parts, though, I don't I like I don't know what to tell you. The best thing you can do is to lower your settings to 2.0 low spec. Um, in a game like ABA, though. The graphics don't matter that much. I mean, I use decently high graphics, but I'm still using a low resolution. The only reason I use high graphics, honestly, is because I want to make my videos look decent for you guys to watch. Um, but normally, especially in scrims or competition, I lower all my settings. The only thing I might keep on is shadows, and that's because there are certain situations where uh, shadows are helpful, like on Dual Sight or uh, Fox Hunt. But other than that, you don't really need max settings at all. In fact, I would recommend turning everything on low because the higher your FPS, the more consistent your aim's going to be, the more consistent 
the game's gonna be it's gonna be smoother it's gonna be easier to aim for you and in general you're just gonna get a lot more FPS which is important all three of us we, uh, me long and snow uh, yeah. we all play 800 by 600 and a lot of people are like well you probably just play that because you're used to that or uh, it's just you think it's better but in in reality it's it really does help you with your aim it's just because the crosshair is bigger there's as I said in previous commentaries it's less room for error and it's just easier in general for you to aim I mean you you kind of have to get used to the blurriness but it's worth it in the end all right um, other hardware yeah uh, just I guess two more things one of the things that people don't really pay attention about the monitor the monitor you got to have a good monitor and when I say good monitor it's not the bigger the better it's the quality of that monitor it's like what kind of refresh rate are you running yeah okay so tell them about tell them a little bit about refresh rate. okay size matters <laughs> but uh, also refresh rate matters um, if you're running an LCD monitor, you're probably at 60 hertz uh, by Woo! default, which is awful. Aww. Like, uh, after it's one of those things where if you play 60 hertz, you don't really notice it until until you play a higher refresh rate, like 75, like 75 or, or higher. Um, if you used a CRT ever in your life, if you even know what that stands for, I, I don't know. I don't remember what that is. One of those big ass Anyway, like, big ass monitors. monitors. Basically, the things that look like a TV. But, um, uh, those are the best, in my opinion, for a refresh rate. They they have the best technology for that. But moving but it on. hurts your eyes. Moving on. Um, r higher refresh rate uh, means that you see more frames on the screen at one time. So if you have a monitor that goes to 120 hertz you will see 120 frames per second. And if you're seeing 120 frames per second versus 60 or 75, you're seeing double of what your what your uh, what your competition sees or or what normal people would see. It, I mean, you may not notice it. I mean, a lot of people will think, well, you can only see so many frames per second, blah, blah, blah. No. It's one of these, it's night and day, I would say, having a 120 hertz monitor versus a 60 hertz. You see so much more. You're able to turn and see a lot more because there's more frames on the screen, and there's a, just a lot less blurriness in general. So, if you have the money, 120 hertz is the way to go. Or if you don't have the money, try and find an old CRT that you can play on because CRTs, even even at 120, even if you have a 120 hertz monitor, CRTs are still better. All right. So to wrap it up, if you if you really <clears throat> feel like uh, there's Plenty of value playing well in uh, any game. Any game. Any game. Not even ABA. Any yeah. game in general. If you enjoy being... If you enjoy the game and you want to be the best you can, it is important to upgrade your equipment. Yeah. So, you got to dish out the cash. That's that. Like, Simple. every... And do your research. Like, we already told you our recommendation. Just do your research. Don't try to stay away from what the gimmicks. common... Yeah. Gimmicks and common... Uh, Interest. Try to stay away from that. Try to really study what you're really using. Yeah. Um, okay. On to the next thing. Uh, I wanted to do a facts of the day kind of thing, but um, I kind of want to turn to everyone really wants to know more game sense stuff. So another tip, just one more tip, I guess, for Snow to explain to us. Give us. One tip to really focus on. Okay. Um, how about something for clan warring? Um, if you guys yeah, are in a war. clan and you guys do clan wars, which I'm sure a lot of you do, a really good tip. Hold on. Clan war meaning 5v5 five five demo. 5v5 five okay. five demo, streams, okay. tournaments, whatever. Yeah. Um, a really important tip. I mean, it, this probably sounds really simple, but a lot of people just don't think about it. Um... If you're pushing a site, let's say you're pushing site two on uh, Black Scent, for example, and you see those two guys at the double stair, and you take them both out, and you're like, okay, well, we took them both out. We should just stay here and, and try and get more pick. No. The thing is, 90% of teams will do what we call a 
two, one, two strat. They put two at site one, they put one at middle, and they put two at two, regardless of the map. Regardless of the map, this is a very standard defensive play. They they that's just usually ninety percent of the teams will play that way. Right. Um, depends on the map, but I mean, y you should expect two people at all times, <clears throat> maybe three, or maybe one. It's but normally, uh, the most common situation is a is two people on one site, one guy middle, and two guys at the other site. So, if you take out the two guys pushing one site. Your entire team can push that site with almost no resistance, and you should be able to get the bomb down just because you took out those two guys and they have nothing to throw at you until you have the bomb down already. So they're stuck in a 3v whatever situation, and they have to retake a bomb site. Depending on, <clears throat> depending on the map, once you take out those two guys, you have about five, six seconds until the guy from the mid you know, even, you'll see him, and then you'll have, like, about 10 seconds from the people all the way across the map. Obviously, it depends on the, it depends on the map. Um, but the idea of the defensive 2-1-2 two, two is they, the team, the defensive team wants to spread their, you know, power evenly, so you can't take one site definitively. So if you take out two, two of their teammates on one site, they're off balance incredibly, and you want to milk that for all it's worth, so rush the site hard. Rush the site as hard as you can, exactly. Um, there are certain sites, though, on certain maps, like India, for example, site 2 is usually only guarded by one person, like a sniper, so if you take out that sniper, you know you can push that site 90% of the time, so your entire team should be able to push that. And it's important for your team to get the bomb down, because if you have the bomb down, you are already at an advantage, because they're on the clock, they have to take that site back within 40 seconds. Yeah. So it's important to get that bomb down, it's important to know when you can get that bomb down, and it's important to know uh, what you're up against at all times. Yeah, usually, in, in most cases, the, the defensive team has the advantage, and when you put them on a time limit, and you're entrenched in a site, you're defending, so you have you have you have an advantage of defending, and you also give them a time, limit. and that is just golden. You need to get the bomb down. Someone needs to be watching the guy planning at all times. Um, yeah, get your clan back together, get your friends back into this game. Um, that's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for the comments. Please rate this video. Give us some more shit to talk about. Subscribe! Subscribe for sure. Fan me on Facebook. Shut up, Pyro. Alright. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. See ya!